today I want all of us to gather we will study from the Bible on how Jesus Christ our Lord after having appeared to Mary Magdalene and to the few women he appeared to Peter Peter was the first male to whom Jesus appeared so uh, something interesting to look at it uh, Peter's uh, history with Jesus is very interesting Jesus called him saying you will be a fisher of men so far you've been a fisher of fishes but from now you'll be a fisher of men and said to him come and follow me I'll make you a fisher of men so he began to follow Jesus and um, one day Jesus our Lord asked uh, Peter a question who do people say I am and the disciples said some say you're John the Baptist some say that you're Elijah from the Old Testament come back to life and different kind of things Jesus said okay who do you guys say I am but why did Jesus say that was Jesus going through some identity crisis the reason he asked his disciples do you know who I am who do you think I am is so that disciples will not have identity crisis because once they know who Christ is they become strong in the grace of God that's why Jesus asked who do you say I am so Peter answered and then at that time he was called Simon Simon answered saying you are Christus Christ you are Christ Christos you are Christ the Son of God you are Christ God incarnate Christ means the anointed one Messiah God coming in the flesh Jesus said flesh and blood did not reveal this to you my father in heaven revealed this to you upon this revelation upon this truth that I am the son of God I will build my church hallelujah I will not build the church on a building church is not a building church buildings can accommodate a church but church is not a building church is not a religion church is not a theory church is not a culture church the word church comes from the uh, root word ecclesia in the Bible ecclesia means called out ones church in the Bible means called out ones people you and me in whom God dwells is called church so what was he saying he was saying look two things one the gates of hell will be there so when God is building you there are gates of hell against you please don't think that every devil will stand in line with a rose to kiss you no they want to kill you you're on their target list they hate you because you belong to God you're a natural enemy like snakes and mongoose we are neither of those but the devil probably represented in a snake but we actually you can't compare God and devil you can compare light and dark heat and cold water and dry you can compare summer and winter you can compare uh, you know desert with snow you can compare land and uh, ocean you can't compare God and devil because these are totally two different classes God is so different from the devil you can't compare you can probably compare devil and some people <laughs> see when God is with you Lucifer looks like Lilliput <laughs> Amen Hallelujah so the Bible tells us Jesus said the gates of hell will be there and and what is the gate of hell well it's not a physical gate like our church gate it's not a physical gate you have India gate no Bombay Delhi now how many of you have gone outside India have you gone through the India gate so like that <laughs> similarly it's a concept so <clears throat> it's a way of thinking 
Gate is basically a place of decision making, a place of consultation. It's talking about strategy, wiles, planning, systems, uh, thoughts, ideas. That's a gate. Jesus said the gates of hell will be against you. There will be plans of the devil. There will be strategies of the devil. Short term, long term. There will be frustrating ideas of the devil that comes against your life. But they will not prevail against you. The longer they fight with you, the stronger you will become. And the weaker the devil will become. Oh, give God a mighty hand clap. Because he that is in you is greater than he that is in the world. Amen. So the Bible says, second thing is they will not prevail against you. First is the fact. Fact is they are there against you. Second is the truth that they will never prevail against you. So the devil keeps troubling you but you keep rising above it. You keep winning because God is on your side. And Jesus said to Peter, this revelation that you have upon this rock Jesus was pointing to himself when he said that because Peter you are a human I can't build the church on you 30 40 years you're gone and you can't be the foundation because you will be gone then there won't be a foundation but I am from everlasting to everlasting I am the same yesterday today and forever therefore upon this rock I will build my church Hallelujah. You are not built on money. You are not built on technology. You are not built on your kata of the house. You are not built on your education. You are not built on your career. We thank God for those things. You are built on the rock called Christ. Whoa. Hallelujah. 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 You are built on Christ the rock. And therefore the Bible says... Jesus said, now that you have had this revelation, you are no longer Simon. Simon means a reed, a weakling, shaken by the wind. See all those paddy fields? One wind and all the fields, the crops, everything bends in the direction of the wind. Another wind in the other way, they bend the other way. Different winds from different directions, they twist all the way. Jesus said to Peter, you're no longer going to be like that. Once you've received a revelation, you're a changed man. You become different. Hallelujah. Upon this rock, I'll build my church. But you're no longer Simon. You are Peter. Whoa. One look at the resurrected Jesus. His life changed. Now this conversation happened before Jesus rose again from the dead. And he says to Peter, Peter, to you I'm giving the keys of the kingdom. To whomever you open, it will be opened. Wow. Because this revelation is life changing. Once you see Jesus, everything changes. You know, one day there was a true story. Reinhard Bonke in Africa. When he went to one particular tribe to preach, he was told, don't preach there. The pastors told him. Because the main magician has warned, if you come, you will die. So don't preach. And previously, some American preachers came. They all could not preach. While preaching, their throat became shut. They, um, they vomited blood and all kinds of problems. and They couldn't complete the preaching. So they said, Reinhard Bonke, don't preach. You just leave it, cancel the program. So Reinhard Bonke goes, he stands on the platform, he takes the mic. And what happened, this black magician, along with his disciples, they all climbed up a tree, okay, in, in this particular village in Africa, and where they could see him. And they started saying their incantations, their chantings and their mantras to, to send the spirits to bind Bonke that he should not be able to preach. And they were uh, doing all of those things. Bonke took the mic and he shouted, Hallelujah! All these mantravadis from the tree fell down. <laughs> he finished the crusade and they all got baptized. So, yeah. So, the devil and his plans will be there. But they will not win. You will win. 
God's plan will be successful in your life if you continue to walk with a thankful heart. Sometimes God's children go through struggle. That's all right. We come out victorious. Sometimes unexplainable things happen. We don't know why. But one thing we know, God's got a way of making all things work around for good to them that love God Almighty. Amen. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 5, you will find the Bible saying, And Jesus appeared to Cephas. That's another name of Peter. Peter had another name. What's it? Cephas. Cephas. It has some meaning, but his another name was Cephas. Now, the question is this. I studied the Bible. I found this story parallel in Luke 24 and some other places. But nowhere it is written what happened between Jesus and Peter. It's not there. I don't know how to explain this. I read the Bible, studied Jewish traditions. I don't know. Peter is a fellow who can't, who will, who can't keep quiet. He will talk something even about nothing. But about this story, after Jesus rose again from the dead, he and Peter met privately. First Mary Magdalene, second the woman, third was Peter. But what happened between Peter and Jesus, not written anywhere. It looks like Peter also never told the other disciples what happened between both of them. Somehow the man kept it a secret. When we go to heaven, we'll ask Jesus. Peter will never say, but Christ will say, we'll ask him. What did you both discuss? He'll say, I really want to know. But I have an assumption. I have some ideas. Some clue I have, I'll share with you. What clue, I'll tell you. What probably happened between Jesus and Peter is the last time Jesus and Peter spoke was before crucifixion. Jesus kept saying, I'm going to be crucified. Peter kept saying, stop talking this. Always negative. What is this? So, Jesus told Peter, you Satan, get behind me. Actually, Peter got four names. That was the fourth one, but it was used, <laughs> it was used only once. So, we don't need to elaborate on that. Then after some time Jesus said to all the disciples, tonight you will all leave me. I'll be like a shepherd without sheep. You'll all leave me. I'm going to be arrested. Peter said, Jesus, now let me make one point clear. Read my lips. All may leave you. I <laughs> never leave you. Ye dosati. Na chodenge. Never. Never believe you. Peter is not like others. Had I to leave you, I'd have left you long back. I followed you leaving my boat and my net. My dad's family business. Our boat was the latest imported one. I left everything. I was, was just picking up. Business was just picking up. I left it. Why? And now you say I will leave you. Forget it. I will be with you. Jesus said, before the cock can crow three times early in the morning, you would have denied me. Peter said, Vekinge, we'll see. Now what happened that night? Jesus gets arrested. Jesus is moving from one prison to the, not sorry, one magistrate, one court to the other. Peter is also just following with the distance. Everybody say, with the distance. Interesting, huh? till now Peter was a fellow who made others keep a distance and he was close to Jesus. Now he keeps a distance. That's all what human love is. But he's sitting in the court. One girl comes to Peter and says, you are also a disciple of Jesus, na? The way you are talking reveals it. He says, no, what happened to you lady? Late night you didn't sleep, I think you got some problem. What do you think, huh? And he changed his accent. He's not talking original now. He's changed his accent. He's trying to pretend he's not a Galilean. Again, after some time, the girl comes and says, she's probably the bench clerk or something in the court. She says, you definitely look like a disciple of Jesus. Let me tell you one thing. If you hang around Jesus for a long time, you will start looking like him. You will start talking like him. You will start walking. They can see a difference in your life. You can't run away from that truth. Hallelujah. Peter got mad. He said, I promise you, I don't know this Jesus. And he began to curse himself. He's scared that they will arrest him and take him with Jesus for crucifixion. 
he got up and he said I'm going from here that's when the cock began to crow and Jesus looked at him he was broken he cried he went out and he wept buckets he said I can't believe I did this my God what happened to me he started crying and crying and crying and crying and crying and he walked away and they took Jesus for crucifixion the next day he was crucified but Peter when you read the Bible records does not seem to have been so close to the Calvary he seemed to have cried and got depressed and walked away didn't know what to do he never seems to have come close he doesn't know what to do he went with the other disciples he's feeling so bad that in the worst moments of his master he left him he was feeling so bad for himself he's feeling total sinner so what probably happened is after resurrection Jesus came privately met with Peter and said Peter it's okay forget it you thought I won't come back I'm back I'm doing good and I want you to know you're forgiven no punishment you are back on team A we've got plans to take the whole world remember what I told you when I called you you're back in the game you're back on team A and you're gonna catch it the Holy Spirit is gonna come on you oh talk about restoration my Jesus is God of restoration give Peter's God a mighty hand clap hallelujah that's our Jesus amen he is a restorer of the broken ones no condemnation when he forgives it is a paka forgiveness a young lady once made a big mistake in her life ten years later God started using her but in her personal times of prayer she would cry and say God I don't know how to say this but I'm feeling so guilty I'm sorry one day after a big miracle crusade thousands of people were healed some, somewhere in uh, uh, near the Hollywood area Los Angeles somewhere in that region a big ministry happened and then she went and she started crying God I don't know why the sin I have done in my past it's not leaving my mind I'm sorry about it and the Holy Spirit asked her what are you talking about every time she said God ten years ago you know I committed sin before you I insulted you Holy Spirit said to her what was that and then she began to explain and Holy Spirit told her oh you know I forgot about it because what I forgive I forget that's Jesus give him a big 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 hand of thanks and say thank you Lord what he forgive he forget hallelujah that's our Jesus he does not remember our iniquities against us he established Peter again in the call restored him back on track as if he never made a mistake look at it when Jesus is talking to other disciples there's no mention not once Jesus mentioned but still what you did know Peter nothing I can never forget what you did Peter we human beings are like that no those nails was paining but your words hurt more Peter <laughs> that's the world we live in that's the world we live in a world full of half forgiveness no full forgiveness only half forgiveness hmm. but Jesus when he forgives hallelujah he will treat you like you never did a sin he treats us like we never made a mistake that's why we have to worship him every time we come to his presence and say thank you Lord because your faithfulness is never ending how does he restore us I'm going to skip a few scriptures and what does he do he moves us from fear to faith mark chapter 3 and verse 14 Jesus said you got to be with me let's read that together Jesus ordained them that they should be and then that they should go out and preach before God uses you to do things he calls you to be in his presence hallelujah spend time with Jesus Matthew chapter 8 and the Bible says God moved him from confusion to conviction 
He was a man who was always confused, didn't know what to do, and didn't know what to speak. But God moved him to conviction. Let's read that together. When Jesus came into Peter's house, he saw Peter's mother-in-law sick of Peter. No, sick of fever. And he, Jesus touched mother-in-law's hand and the fever. When Jesus touch you, everything else will leave you. What has to go will go with one touch of Jesus. Amen. And what did she do? She got up and ministered. Everybody shout with me. I am saved, I am saved. to serve. To serve. When God heals you, when God blesses you, don't forget to get up and serve the body of Christ where God's put you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When Jesus healed her, the first thing she did, she began to minister to them. Take your time, talents and treasure to serve in the house of God. Don't you forget that. How does God restore? When God restores you, He restores you so good. Isaiah chapter 61 and the Bible says verse 2 and 3 sorry three and four let's read that to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion to give unto them beauty instead of an oil of joy instead of the garment of praise instead of that they might be called the trees of righteousness the planting of the that he might be glorified let's shout this together and they shall build the old ways they shall rise up the former desolations and they shall repair the waste cities the desolation hallelujah many generations in your family many generations in your village many generations in your ancestors may have struggled and have gone down and have been cursed but in your generation god is saying i'm going to restore you i'm going to build you and no curse hallelujah is going to follow you because you're washed by the blood of jesus when God restores you, you will be better than the original. Job. And the Bible says, Though your beginning was small, <laughs> Yet, Your latter days Shall greatly increase. Get ready for increase, brothers and sisters. If God is with you, you don't have a choice, man. One vision of Jesus, everything changes. Hallelujah. Amen. How do we walk in this wisdom of restoration? One of the things about serving God, as Peter did, is in Daniel chapter 12. And the Bible says, And many of them that sleep, sleep means dead, in the dust of the earth shall awake. On the day of resurrection, some to eternal life and some to go to hell it's called shame and eternal contempt but they that be wise wise means not IIT and IIM wisdom of God's word okay wisdom of God's word is not by hiding scripture wisdom of God's word is revelation of Christ and walking in it they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the sky the firmament and they that turn many to righteousness ha 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 today when you go and share the gospel people say you have no other job you are a fool but don't worry man 60 80 years is nothing it's like an interview time for compared to eternity and there you're going to shine in the presence of God forever because you were saved to serve Hallelujah. There is an eternity. And in eternity, the Bible says, those that saved people, those that helped people come to Christ, those that turned people to righteousness, they will shine in His presence. Be encouraged, my brother. Be encouraged, my sister. You will not be put to shame. Life on the earth is beautiful with Christ, but compared to eternity, it's nothing. Eternity is going to be so beautiful. And you are called into that eternity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Peter's Jesus is your Jesus. In that one touch of God on Peter's life.
he was restored back when God's touch comes to you every day you are restored back into plan A of God God's got no plan B because he knows how to make the plan A work he's a faithful God eyes closed heads bowed let's say Jesus I want to thank you because you're in my life and I want to be restored back fully oh God I thank you that you are the Jesus of Peter you are my Jesus I know you are the son of God I worship you today go on talk to him for some time are you struggling are you worried you feel like giving up no don't don't your sin may be as red as scarlet but Jesus said when I wash it out you'll be white as snow his forgiveness is more powerful than your sin open your mouth and tell him Lord I really want your grace in my life I want your anointing in my life I really want your touch in my life Heavenly Father I want to thank you today that you've spoken to us this is your heart this is your heartbeat to restore men and women back to God with the message of reconciliation we thank you Jesus Lord as your servants we want to be people who love you thank you that you will restore careers and health and relationships and above all our spiritual lives Holy Spirit we thank you and we pray that everybody here from today will experience a new level of restoration hallelujah thank you that there is no condemnation in Christ Jesus father thank you for your hand is really upon us because you promised in the book of Joel the seasons and the times that the enemy took away I will return to you oh we receive that promise of yours and we thank you for the covenant of your word we love you today in Jesus name we pray and the people said Amen. Hallelujah. Peter's Jesus is our Jesus. Amen. Oh, let's give God a mighty hand clap. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. This program is made possible by your faithful financial support. Join us along with the thousands hearing God's word. If you are in Bangalore, please join us at Bethel AG Church International Worship Center. Number 67 Ring Road, Hebal, Bangalore 24. Or visit us online at www.bethelag.com. Thank you for watching.